So we have talked a couple of times rather obliquely and vaguely about what happens before relationships are. Now we're actually gonna zero in on what they mean and why they're relevant for Java concurrent programs. So we'll talk about what happens before relationships mean in general and we'll focus on what happens before relationships mean in Java because they have a very specific semantic in the context of Java concurrency and, and Java's memory model. Um, it's a little bit complicated. It's, it's very subtle, it's low level, and it takes a while to get your head around it, but if you grasp this, then a lot of the other stuff that we've been talking about will make more sense. The good news, by the way, is um, if you just kind of use the Java synchronizers we've covered, they handle all this stuff under the hood, and so some of the advanced techniques we're gonna talk about are for people who are trying to do super clever things to minimize synchronization, but most human beings, most mere mortals writing concurrent code probably don't have to know all the nitty gritty details, but they are kind of interesting to know. So let's start with the, the baseline. So every action in a single threaded, uh, sorry, every action in a single thread, if you just have one thread in your program, then that necessarily happens before the next operation. I think that's pretty clear. It's kind of like if you had a, a taxi stand or if you had a, a drive-through window at a fast food restaurant, you know, the, the order that is for the car ahead of you in line happens before your order, right? Pretty much by definition, because you have a very hard time, you know, smashing your car through the line and cutting in front of the car in front of you, right? And the same thing is probably true with a, a taxi line. If, if people, you know, butt ahead in line, then there's a fist fight that breaks out because you're supposed to stay in order. So it's trivially the case that if you're in a sequential program with one thread of control, then whatever happened before, happened before, right? So it's, it's, it's sequential. That's sort of the very essence of sequential behavior. So this is kind of you know, one model. This is what happens in a multi-threaded program if you have actions in different threads that are all occurring at the same time um, without proper synchronization, you can have a big pileup. Everything smashes into each other, and it's a big mess. Okay, so what happens before a relationship does is it will guarantee that if some action happens before some other action, that the results that you see as a programmer must in fact reflect that ordering. So it's sort of, you know, politely letting you switch lanes and move things around, as opposed to having a big massive pileup like this. And what you want to have happen is a way to signal the right ordering. And that's what we're gonna talk about. So you can have things occur in the right order in a more disciplined and uh, polite way. Um, now what's interesting about this, this is really interesting, and this is why happens before relationships are so important, especially in modern multiprocessor or multi-core systems where the systems intentionally rearrange the order of stuff. So under the hood, things in fact may occur in different orders, but when you have the happens before relationship enabled, they'll end up with the right results even if they ran out of order. And the reason why things execute out of order is because of the optimizations that can take place in modern multi-core systems where they're trying to optimize things for raw throughput, not considering semantics, and then semantics get layered on top of that through constructs like happens before relationships or volatile or synchronized or other things we've been talking about in the course. So a happens before relationship in Java and Java's memory model is a guarantee by the Java runtime system, the execution environment, the virtual machine, the Android runtime or whatever, that an action performed by one thread will be properly visible to another action running in a different thread in the right order. So it, it goes back to this consistency and ordering concept we've talked about. So here's an example of what you want to have happen. Uh, you have thread one come along and set answer to 42, and then set ready to true. And if you've got everything properly synchronized, then if this other thread comes along and discovers that ready is true, it will get the answer 42. So if, if things are properly synchronized, if you have proper happens before relationships, that's what you'll get. If you don't have things synchronized, then it could very well be the case that this thread finds ready being true, but
but the answer would be something else than 42. So this, if this is properly synchronized, we'll get the right results. Otherwise, we could get the wrong results. And it, that's why these synchronizers are so important, because they ensure you get these happens before relationships consistent and visible in the right place at the right time, in the right order. So how is this typically done? Well, there's a bunch of mechanisms we've talked about quite a bit so far that handle this in Java. So clearly, atomic operators that we talked about, like the compare and swap operators, the uh, atomic variables, uh, sorry, the atomic, yeah, atomic operations would be compare and swap or compare and set. Atomic variables like atomic long, atomic integer, atomic reference, atomic Boolean. And then there's also various classes that will have these things too, like a concurrent hash map and so on that, that do this stuff. So here's some examples with, say, Java volatile variables that we talked about before. So in that case, reads and writes of volatile fields will bypass local caches and go directly into main memory. So if someone in one thread writes to a volatile variable, it goes directly to shared memory such that the next read that takes place in some other thread will get that updated variable atomically without sharding it, without getting pieces of it split and fragmented. What's most interesting in this discussion we're about to have are atomic operations or happens before relationships on objects that contain multiple fields, because that's where it really starts to matter, because you don't want to have things inconsistent. So here's an example. This is very similar to what we looked at a few minutes ago. Um, we come along in thread A. Let's assume for sake of argument that uh, Y and X are fields that are visible to both threads, and we've got a lock M, which is also visible to both threads. So thread A comes along, it sets Y to 1, it acquires the lock, and then it sets X to 1, and then it unlocks the lock. Now, of course, if anybody else had come along and say in thread B and tried to uh, access these fields, they would have to wait because the lock was held. So when this lock is unlocked, then this other thread can run. And at that point, it's guaranteed that we'll get the right value of x, we'll get the right value of y uh, after doing these operations. So that's, that's the happens before relationship. It basically is ensuring caches are properly flushed and other threads get a chance to read the results of those caches being flushed in their cores. These relationships often require relatively elaborate synchronization mechanisms. So we'll talk about some of those in just a second. 